fan theft in the trade industry, it's it's gone out of control. And the world is full of scumbags. And unfortunately, these scumbags, they don't know the repercussions of robbing a tradesman's van. They're taking all their kit, they're cleaning the whole van out just to earn a few quid. And who is it that's actually buying these tools? I've never been offered a decent SDS drill secondhand or a multimeter. Let's be honest, if you're a tradesman and you spend your good hard earned money on all this kit, it's bloody expensive, then you're gonna keep it until it's falling apart in your hands because you wanna get your money's worth. Being in the trade myself, my van's been broken into three times. And in this podcast, I'm gonna go into detail of the things that I've done to hopefully stop people breaking into my van and fingers crossed, because it hasn't happened in a little while, that I can obviously help you to protect your van too. Toolbox Tools for Electricians, helping electricians reduce stress, gain back time and earn more money. Ben Poulter here once again, your host of Toolbox Talks for Electricians. And I would like to say that I've never been a victim of robbery. But unfortunately, yeah, I've been robbed three times in my van. And it's just the same as many other tradesmen that have also been a victim of these scumbags. And all it takes is sort of five minutes. I've seen these videos all over the internet that, that how they do it. They just obviously drill a hole in the door or they have these little machines that can open up the automatic locks. I just don't know how they do it. I don't know how they find out to do it. You must be a scumbag to want to invest your time into finding out how all these things work. But for the five minutes of what these scumbags do, it can ruin your day, if not your week. Because also, you've got to think if you can afford to replace the kit that's been robbed too. Because if you think about it, if you've got no kit, you can't go out and do any work. If you can't do any work, you can't earn any money. So you've got no choice but to go out and spend a fortune to replace your kit. And some of these horrible individuals, they know that too. So when they rob your van, they come back a few weeks later and think, wait up, this bloke's probably got a new kit. So they rob it again. And I do think that these scumbags, they're risking their life basically robbing people's vans because I do know I, you just see red. If you saw someone breaking into your van, you wouldn't think, excuse me, I'm going to phone the police. It'll be here in half hour where they might stop them. They'll be long gone by then. You see red. You grab the nearest thing, a hammer, a baseball bat, and you'd be out there. And you can, unfortunately, if you hit someone around the head, it could probably kill them. Because if they do get caught by the police, what's going to happen? They're going to get a slap on the wrist for breaking in your van and then get banged up with their mates in HM prison. And I don't know, maybe some of these guys, they want to be banged up with a load of blokes. But the type of people that rob in these vans, they have, they've got nothing to lose. Maybe they've got no kids in their life that they actually care about. They've got no ambition in life. They want to, don't want to go anywhere. They've got no look toward the future to where they want to be or they don't want, to, don't want to grow a business or make any money or make something of themselves. Or well, basically, they haven't got any morals. I mean, how can they with the profession that they've chose to be a van thief? In a funny little way, I suppose I feel sorry for these people. Because personally myself, if I go to the pub in an evening, I don't even have a shandy anymore. Nothing with alcohol, alcohol in it. Because just in case I'm over the limit, you don't know if I got carried away, I have a couple of shandies. And if I'm a little bit over that limit, it's not just that I might lose my license if I get caught by the police. But... What if I am a bit drunk sort of thing? Because I'm a lightweight these days and I have an accident and actually hurt somebody and then put them in hospital. I, I don't want that thing to happen. So I just don't bother. I do think if I lose my license, then I'm screwed. You can't exactly go and oh, I suppose you could employ an apprentice to come and drive you around all the time. But you don't want to have to rely on someone to give you lifts all the time. It's not going to happen. It's not really a good way to build a business. And the first time that my van was robbed, it was on a 2004 Ford Transit. And the funny thing is, there was no damage whatsoever. When I nipped out in the morning to stick my lunch in the back, I have to stick it in the back because the dog will only eat it in the front. I opened the back door and it weren't locked. And I thought, am I being an idiot? Did I not lock it last night? But it turned out, no, there's a certain place. If you cut some wires on a Ford Transit 2004, that actual model, then all the locks just pop open. Come on, Ford, you've got to do something about that. There's got to be a fail safe there where you can stop these van thieves to be able to get into your van so easy. It didn't just pop the front open either. It popped all the locks open. So basically, all the, that, that van couldn't lock after that wire's been damaged. Which I suppose, yeah, it'd be good if your van was in an accident, it popped the locks open, fantastic. 
but not whilst it's sitting there and it was locked. There've got to be some sort of relay they can put in where this can't happen. And the only thing that was really took out my van that time was my SDS drill and my new brand new fluke tester. I'd only had it a few months. And the thing is, when they've gone in there as well, they've even gone through the tool bag and picked out a selection of maybe cutters or screwdrivers that they, I don't know whether they needed to break into more vans. It just wound me up a little bit at that time, thinking the cheeky little gits. They even took their time to rummage through the actual tool bag to find the specific tools that they wanted, and they left the rest behind. I was insured, however, but when talking to the insurance company, and they say, right, what damage has happened to the van? And Well, nothing really. There's a few wires that have been cut. And I think they thought that I was lying. I did get paid out. But it takes a little while. I didn't get paid out that same day. The jobs that I had going on where I might have needed my SDS drill or my tester, I, I couldn't use them. So I had to really bite the bullet and go out and buy some more. Now, that 2004 van, yeah, it was a bit old. It was a little bit beaten up. I didn't really care what it looked like on the outside or the inside, to be honest. I just wanted to protect that van to make sure it never got broke into again after that. So I went out, I think, down screw fix, and I bought the big locks, these big, sturdy, massive panel locks were basically designed for vans. They're still sort of their van locks, so they sell them as van locks. But they're big old clumpy things. They're ugly. They stick out a couple of inches from the door. But I thought after 1,500 quids worth of kit coming missing out of the van, I've got to do something. I've got to try and stop this happening again. Because who says? They might have seen what's in the van, come back the next night thinking, yeah, we've got a buyer for this um, Makita kit I've got in there. You can just take that as well. And with the insurance, I had to prove that I actually had the kit. I had to show them maybe photos that I've got of it, receipts when I bought it. And if you like myself, myself sort of thing, you probably got kit that you've had for a few years. You might have got it repaired, but you keep it, especially in the SDS drill. They last a few years. So where the hell did you put the receipt? I don't know. So you've got to keep that to hand if you ever get robbed. Or maybe take pictures of your kit. They say that pictures of your kit will do. Well, you can't just go and Google a bleeding drill off the thing. You've got to actually have the kit in your van, I think. It took me a little while. It was a half a day sort of thing where I have to faff around, finding these receipts, finding some photos of kit that I've got somewhere because I don't really go and take a picture of a drill. It's normally pictures of work that I've got on my phone. And this was the fact that I was quite fortunate. I did have a bit of savings where I could dip into to go out and buy new kit. Some people are not in that position. They work maybe or they maybe started a business or they haven't got much savings in their account, or they maybe started a business and got all brand new kit, maybe not even paid for yet, and it gets robbed. But I'm not going to lie, it is quite cool getting new kit. You always try and make yourself feel a bit better after getting robbed, because there's nothing you can do. You can't go out and find them. You can't go out and find the vigilante and find these people that rob all your kit. So you treat yourself and just spend that little bit more to get the kit that you replace it with just a little bit better. Another step further, what I did with this van is I went onto Amazon and bought a caravan alarm. Basically, it's a little PIR sensor that you mount on the inside of your van and it's got a remote control where you can set it like day and night. Sometimes, yeah, it did go off with a cobweb or a spider or the wind might have blown the van a bit, but it was a loud siren. So basically, if anyone broke into that van, it would bleed and deafen them. And I'd love to say that that locks on the doors that I put and the siren in the back of the van was a massive deterrent and it stopped people breaking into it. Well, yeah, they did. They, they didn't get into the van or they didn't make the siren go off. Maybe this was my fault, but I left a pair of ladders on the roof overnight and they took them. And the thing is, I caught them on camera doing it. I've got a camera right outside my bedroom where if I look outside my bedroom window, I can see the van. And there was three guys sitting there just moseying on around, didn't really care. And they were taking off the straps and cutting the straps and the bolts that I had been bolted on the top of the van on the roof rack to get them. And I don't know, they were quite quiet, to be honest. I don't know how, how they can be so quiet with these massive bolt cutters or cutters, uh, the croppers they had. But there was three of them. One of them did it, and the other one just stood around, leaned against the missus' car, just chilling out. They were there for 15 minutes getting them ladders off. Now, them ladders, what they cost? I think I bought them second hand for 50 quid. So I've had them a few years. They were a bit wrecked. They were only alley ladders. So they're going to be worth, what, a couple of quid in scrap. So if they go and sell them for 15 quid, I tell you what, if they knocked on my door and said, mate, we're going to rob your van, I would have given 15 quid to piss off. 
they did, however, I notice is to climbed up the back of the van because the van is backed up to the garage. So they climbed up behind the van, and I know this because they bloody they'd stood on the back bumper and that fell off. So they tried to get in the back of the van. But obviously, once you go around the back of the van, you see I've got these stupid, great big padlock bolt on the back that they probably thought, yeah, that ain't going to happen. But they trashed the back of the van anyway. It does make me wonder how desperate these guys are to get hold of kit out your van to maybe make their 20, 30 quid. I don't even know how much they sell them for because I've never been offered second-hand kit. But how do they know that I haven't got a shotgun or I'm sort of this crazy person that's going to hang it out of the window and blow the frigging head off? Or I haven't got some sort of drug-thirsty, crazy Alsatian that's going to go out there and rip their limbs, their lip, rip their limbs off. How do they don't they don't know that? So they've got to be quite desperate to be able to risk it for a fifteen quid or fifty quid set of ladders. Because you never know. I could be anything. They don't even know these people that obviously they're robbing. So it could be one of these crazy people that they can throw acid over them. That could obviously hurt them. How do they know that that van's not booby trapped where, where they go and touch it and they get a shock themselves? They don't know this thing, these things. I, I just don't understand why they're risking it so much for a couple of quid. They must feel like their lives are pretty worthless where the amount of money they make one evening is, I don't know, maybe they do a few vans so they get 100 quid a piece. Surely they could go out and work in the day because I know for a fact if I'm working a night shift, I want at least 500 quid. But if they went out and worked in the day, if they had a trade behind them, if they put the time into it to become a plaster or a builder or an electrician or a plumber, they could probably make 200 quid a day legitimately. I think even they could even go to a warehouse where you pull a pump truck round, order picking, and you could probably make a couple of hundred quid doing that. But I'm assuming these guys want quick, easy money. Well, yeah, they might get quick and easy money. But what about the next week when they want quick and easy money again? One time... It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work out. Someone might lean out the window with that shotgun. Some might want, someone might booby trap their van where you get a shock and it blows your frigging hand off. You're going to walk around with one hand the rest of your life. Do you remember? Yeah, I lost my hand because I was robbing vans. You don't sound like a decent person. You're not going to get on well in life, are you? So then the time come to get a new van. And that's an exciting time to start with. I treated myself to a Ford Custom Transit which is also a limited edition. It had heated seats. I love that van. I wish I still had it now. And this was after a few years when I had a little bit more money. So to start with, I didn't want to put them big old bulky locks on the side where I have to drill a hole into the free side of the van. They look ugly. So I got these slam locks fitted for 500 pounds. And the thing is with these slam locks, you have to have the key to open the door. You've got to be careful sometimes because you can easily shut your keys in the back. But it was a deterrent to stop people breaking into it. They were fitted specific, specifically in a certain place on the door to stop and be able to rip the door open. So if I did lock my keys in the back, it would have been a bit of a nightmare. But if it stops me getting robbed, it's well worth it. And I was doing this job in Skegness, or as I used to call it, Skeg Vegas. And it was a seaside town in the UK. And it was a good night out. Well, it was sort of 20 years ago when I used to go out up there. And I was only up there for a couple of nights because we were doing this job and we just thought we'd stay a couple of nights to get it done. And the site that we were working on, we, it was quite secure. It had a security guard at night. So we thought, well, if we locked our kit inside the box on site, it's going to be a lot safer than in the van in the evening. But with no windows in the back, how does a fan thief know that you ain't got no kit inside? It didn't stop them wanting to try and peel the door open to have a look. And the locks, the slam locks that I had fitted, they actually did their job. They stopped them getting in the back. They couldn't get that open. But they did, however, peel the side of the front, the, the van off, the side door. They peeled it off like a can open. They haven't got a clue how. They must have had some bloody strength on them or two or three of them bending that door open. That's two grand's worth of damage. That door is wrecked. And that was hassle as well because I couldn't drive that. The van still drove it. It still went in gear and went along. But the door was all bent out. It was either take the door off to drive home, bend it back and smash it to bits even more. I had to just get it recovered. This is a scenario where it makes you wish, if I saw these guys looking in the van, thinking they're going to break into it, I would have just unlocked it and said, lads, have a look. There's nothing in there. Because they're not interested in the van. They're not interested in parts in the van. If they're interested in the wheels, they would have took them. If they're interested in anything else, I think all they reached in was took a, took one of my jumpers. 
I'm not even sure whether I lost that on a night out, to be honest, but that jumper was scrap anyway. It was just a normal hoodie. So they didn't get much out of the van in the first place. When this happens, it's it makes you so angry, so angry sometimes you think you could cry because even though you've still got your kit and you can still work and earn a living, you've got to get the van repaired and there's nothing you can do with it. Take a deep breath, get it repaired and crack on. And a lot of people do say you need to take your uh, kit in the house overnight, stash it in your house. Well, they don't know that your kit's in your house. So they were still going to cause a shed load of damage to your van without anything being in there. In effect, are we fighting a losing battle? But there is a few things that you can do to hopefully stop your van getting broken into. And this first one is probably for maybe if they want to steal the car. It will put a deterrent on them. It's one of these big old yellow steel locks around your steering wheel. If you've got something visible where people can see through the window that you're trying to protect that vehicle, then they're going to think, hang about, that's going to be a lot more hassle than one that hasn't got one of these steering locks on. So something like that might be an advantage if you're in trouble of someone going to nick the whole van. And another good idea, if you're parking on site for a little while, maybe in the middle of a city like Leeds or London, stick, a, stick your own clamp on that van. Stick a clamp on it so then no one can actually nick that van. This is the this is the ideas to stop people actually taking the whole van. So if you put a clamp on that wheel, people are going to think, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get that van away because I've got to get it started. I've got to get it broken into and faff around getting that clamp off of the wheel. And that's going to make a lot of noise. So that might be a bit of a deterrent to stop people taking the van. Now, I don't know whether this one works or doesn't work, but you see all these vans with stickers on there saying no tools left in the van overnight. Do thieves believe this? It might be deterrent. I'm don't, not sure if I can think like a thief. They must be quite thick. So if they've got a sticker on your van that says no tools left in the van overnight, they, they might. I don't know whether they walk up to you and go, oh, right, there's no tools in there. <laughs> We're not going to break into it then. I can't really see it happening. But if you think about it, these van thieves, they're thick as. And another one, if you think about it, when your van gets robbed, <sighs> it's going to be at least a grand's worth of kit going missing. So invest, invest in a decent alarm system, maybe, that can be put on that van where you can get, there's a, there's a knock alarm system. So if they are trying the door, it's going to go off. If they touch the outside of the van, it's going to go off. It, it might go off as a nuisance sometimes, but it's a, definitely a deterrent. So if there's a big siren going off, then them thieves are going to run straight away. And with this caravan alarm that I put inside the van, Yes, it is a deterrent. If they get inside the van, it's going to go off and deafen them. But ideally, you don't want them to get in the van because when they've got in the van, they've done the damage to start with. Another idea, if you've got rear windows on your van, sometimes you see all these vans or cars going around with tinted windows. Yep, they look cool. But there's another reason to get these films put on the inside. It's to stop that glass from shattering. So people can't physically get their hands in to unlock the van because that's a lot what a lot of people do. They smash the window, put their hand in to be able to unlock the door. But you can get these fi films that you put on the inside. So if they smash their window, it's not, it's just going to shatter. So they're going to have to struggle. They're going to probably cut their freaking hand to bits by putting their hand in to be able to get hold of the lock. So that would be another deterrent to stop people to be able to get inside your van. A good idea is what I've had on both of my vans now. I will not quibble i'll always put these slam locks on the van then an extra sort of lock on side that van that will you'll keep the van locked on both sides there's a like on, especially on your sliding door it comes out and then moves along so on your sliding door if you put another lock like a slam lock that it doesn't unlock when you do the auto automatic locker thing the ignition lock then that's more of a deterrent because they can't get in and i I'm assuming that thieves might see that oh, these guys have went over the top, like they've put a new slam lock, they've spent a bit of money on some security devices. So I'm hoping that they'd think, yeah, we're not going to bother trying to get into that van. That's going to be a bit more of a nightmare. And with all vans, if you've got a big size van or even a medium van sometimes, you keep your bulkhead in. You've got a bulkhead that separates the cab from the back. Keep that in. Because then if they do get into the front somehow, hopefully it won't unlock the back so they can't climb over and obviously rob your kit. 
I haven't got this on my van, but I've heard of it a lot. A lot of people with nice sport vans that get nicked all the time or decent Volkswagen transporters that get stolen all the time, because I'm assuming these get stolen to be sold off as parts. There's a ghost alarm you can put on these vans where you get like an immobilizer put on the van where you have to put a certain code in for that ignition to start. So you're all the only one, or obviously your missus or your family might know the code to get into that van. So, or, or even car, it's a good, it's called a ghost alarm. I've seen them on a few cars and I think they are fantastic. That's another deterrent. So may, someone might be able to get into the car. There's no chance of them driving it away. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're going to a certain area where you think, yeah, I'll just, I'll just stick my van down this alleyway. I'll stick my van out here. Don't. Get it as close as you can. Sometimes I've been to these dodgy areas where you think, oh, if I can stick my van, there's a nice parking space right out of the way. That would be a perfect scenario for someone to come and say, right, well, it's right out of the way. No one's going to see me break into this or rob this van. So try to park. Think about where you're parking. Think about where you're parking in the well-lit area. Think about where you're going to park it. People will see, maybe underneath a camera, especially if you're in London, you can park underneath cameras where people don't really want to be caught. I don't think they think much happens to them when they are on camera and they do get caught anyway. But if they're on camera, it's a bit more of a deterrent. They might think, no, there's a camera on that. I'm not going to try and rob that because you got to think about how these idiots think. They've got to be quite thick because they're doing this for a living. So they might think, right, it's underneath a camera. I'm not going to bother trying to do that. Another thing, what I always try and do if I'm parking the van overnight is stick it right up maybe into a corner of a building where you can put the back doors up against the wall and the side doors up against the wall. You get them stupidly tight within like a centimetre. So if someone is going to attempt to get in your van, they're going to struggle and they're not going to be able to get down the side to basically well, where they drill their holes or they smash the hell out of it. So if they need to get into it, they're going to have to move the van to start with. And if they smash a window to take the handbrake off to move the van or anything, then that's when the alarm's going to go off. So they might get into your van but it'll make the alarm go off, so it will save you getting your whole kit robbed. Now, this next one might not be ideal, but I've got them on my kit anyway, just in case, is the little Apple AirPods or the little trackers you put inside. Your certain, you take the bit thing to bits, you take your drill to bits and stash it in there. There's plenty of space inside these drills to stash one in there. So if your kit does get robbed, you can go on your phone, phone find out where it is, who knows what you want to do if you find these people? I would love to be able to find the people that robbed my van. It would just make me feel better because I feel like, oh, they wind you up that they've gone in there and the cheeky little gits have taken your stuff, which you've worked hard for. I'd love to be able to see them. So I've invested, I think, a couple of hundred quid on a load of trackers to put inside my tools. So if even that rubbish tool that costs 30 quid to replace goes missing, it's not the cost of it. It's the principle of the matter. So I can find out where it goes and I'll turn up there and say, excuse me, mate, you've got my drill. And saying that you want to make sure that you mark your kit. I've, I've marked my screwdrivers with a Sharpie pen. I've marked all my kit with a, like a melted my name into it. So if I do actually go and find my kit somewhere or I see somebody else with my kit, I can say that's mine. Like that got stole off me. That is my kit. Cause I'm still hoping one day that I get this flute kit back that I lost sort of, 12, 15 years ago, because that was calibrated and that was registered to me. It, I, they just they obviously can't get it calibrated. I did ask if the calibration comes up for somebody else, are they going to be able to sort of see who this kit belongs to? They said yes. So whether they stole this kit and binned it or gave it to someone, I don't know. But that was a grand's worth of kit. So I, I don't think it will turn up one day, but if it does, I'll have an extra, extra set of kit. That'll be good. Also, in my van, I've got a dash cam. Well, that dash cam, it stays dormant at night until someone walks past it as a motion sensor. And that's a camera stuck in the middle of the front window so it will get anybody walking past it. I know, great, you can get people on camera robbing your van, flipping great YouTube channel or a great video you can stick on social media. But the only thing I want to get is a license plate. If someone pulls up in a van or a car to rob my kit, I want to get their license plate so I can find out where that car's from or that van's from. So this is why I've got a dash cam in there that will pick it up. So hopefully that will work out one day. But if you have got some valuable kit inside your van, 
then get yourself a toolbox as well. Get yourself a metal toolbox that you lock inside. So it's basically a safe inside your van. So if some idiot does break into it, they can maybe take your old bits of copper or take your cable, but they're not going to get your brand new drill or your brand new test kit. Have that safety box inside your van. And I don't know, you can remove the whole box out sometimes. The thing is, it'd be str- you'd struggle because it's bloody heavy because you can bolt that whole box in. You don't want to make it removable because if they can get into your van, they might take the whole box and then open it up somewhere else. But then that's again where you have a tracker inside. Wouldn't it be fantastic if you found where they took your kit? Excuse me, mate. Please, may I have it back? Say that, are you? But if this does actually happen and you do get robbed, I know with my public liability insurance, you can add a certain amount of tool insurance as well because it is a bummer. You might not get your tools the same day off the insurance, but you will get reimbursed a few weeks down the line. So be covered with your tools just in case you do get robbed because taking a hit on five grand of your tools getting cleaned out, it's a tough pill to swallow. One day, van theft will become extinct. And that day will be when maybe the van manufacturers realise that all these vans are getting broken into and they're going to actually do something about it. Do a new fancy technology. Come on, man, you sell us these vans all the time. So invest in someone to come along that's going to put a fantastic alarm because if I could upgrade my alarm to make sure that that van never got robbed, guaranteed, I'd probably spend my money on it. Surely, with all this AI coming along, you could stick an AI robot in the back with a shotgun. That's just my idea. You can use that if you want. But the main thing of all is if your van does get robbed, don't let it get you down. It can change your mood. It can make you angry. It can make you do stupid stuff sometimes. You can kick off at maybe the wrong people and get yourself in trouble. Think about it. These van thieves are scum of the earth. They're just going to be tempted a dozen and maybe be dead on crack one day or the other. So don't worry about them. Crack on with your life and your business because one day they'll be dead in a ditch whilst you're sitting on a beach of all the money you've earned with the kit that you've got. So stay safe, stay positive, and until next time, I'll see you again. I forgot to mention, do you like my new hat? Customer knitted it for me. Not bad, eh? Hey?